Have you ever wondered how massive financial institutions protect themselves from market crashes? What if I told you there's a financial instrument that doesn't require owning the actual asset, yet allows you to profit from its price movements? And what if this same instrument was a key player in both the 2008 financial crisis and in hedging against future ones? Welcome to the mysterious and powerful world of derivatives. In this video, we'll unravel what they are, why they exist, their types, and how they actually work with real-world examples. So stick around, because by the end, you'll understand one of the most important building blocks of modern finance. Let's start simple. A derivative is a financial contract whose value is derived from an underlying asset. That asset could be a stock, a commodity like gold or oil, a currency, an interest rate, even an index like the Nifty or S&P 500. You're not directly buying the asset. Instead, you're trading on how its price will move in the future. Imagine this. You bet with a friend that the price of gold will go up next month. If it does, you win money. If it doesn't, you lose. You never owned gold, but you profited or lost based on its price. That's the essence of a derivative. It's like making financial bets on future prices with contracts. The concept of derivatives isn't new. In fact, it dates back thousands of years. Ancient Mesopotamians used contracts that resemble modern derivatives to lock in prices for future grain harvests. In the 1600s, in the Netherlands, tulip mania gave rise to speculative derivative-like contracts, which are same like futures to buy tulip bulbs. Let's look into it deeply. Tulip mania the first futures contracts in action. In the 1600s, in the Netherlands, tulip mania wasn't just about flowers. It was about speculation, forward contracts, and unregulated risk. Believe it or not, people were trading contracts that looked a lot like today's futures. But for tulip bulbs. The Dutch were fascinated by tulips. Some rare varieties were considered luxury items, status symbols. And by the 1630s, the craze had reached the markets. But tulip bulbs had a season. They could only be dug up and delivered during certain months, from June to September. So, traders invented a clever solution. They began using forward contracts an agreement to buy or sell tulip bulbs at a future date for a fixed price. It worked like this. Example. Let's say you agree today to buy a rare Semper Augustus tulip bulb in three months for 1,000 guilders. You don't pay today, and you don't receive the bulb today either. You're simply locking in the price. You could sell that contract to someone else before it matures, creating a secondary market, just like modern futures trading. As demand grew, people started buying and selling these contracts, not because they wanted tulips, but because they thought the price would keep going up. No one touched a tulip. They were trading paper promises, hoping to flip them for profit. That's why it was called wind trade, trading in thin air. But in February 1637, panic set in. At an auction in Harlem, no one bid. Prices crashed. Contracts became worthless. People had agreed to pay ten times what the bulbs were now worth, and the law didn't help. These tulip contracts were early forms of futures trading, but without any regulation, margins, or clearing systems. It's a powerful example of how futures contracts began and why they're carefully regulated today. 
If you're wondering what a futures contract actually is, don't worry. I'll explain it clearly in the next section. So keep watching. In the U.S., formal derivatives trading began in 1848 with the Chicago Board of Trade, helping farmers lock in prices and manage risk. Now, derivatives are traded in sophisticated forms worth hundreds of trillions globally. There are four primary types of derivatives used in the financial markets, futures, options, swaps, and forwards. Each serves a different purpose in managing risk or speculating on price movements. Let's explore them one by one with precise examples. 1. Futures Contracts a futures contract is a legally binding agreement to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined price on a specific future date. These are standardized and traded on regulated exchanges. Example. Suppose an investor believes that the share price of Reliance Industries will rise. They buy a Reliance futures contract at 2,800 rupees for expiry next month. If the price increases to 2,900 rupees, the investor profits from the difference. If the price drops, they incur a loss. Since it's a binding agreement, both parties must fulfill the contract at expiry. 2. Options Contracts An option gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an asset at a specific price called the strike price before a set expiration date. To buy an option, the investor pays a small fee up front. This is known as the premium. Think of it like booking fees. You pay a small amount to reserve your right to make a move later. There are two types of options. Call option, the right to buy and put option, the right to sell. Example. Call option. Let's say you expect Infosys stock to rise. You buy a call option with a strike price of 1,500 rupees and pay a premium of 50 rupees per share. Now, if Infosys rises to 1,600 rupees before expiry, you can buy it at 1,500 rupees and sell at 1,600 rupees, earning 100 rupees per share in profit. After subtracting the 50 rupee premium, your net gain is 50 rupees per share. But what if Infosys stays below 1,500 rupees? Then you won't exercise the option. You'll let it expire. And your only loss is the 50 rupee premium you paid. Example Put option. Now, Assume you expect Infosys to fall. You buy a put option with a strike price of 1,500 rupees and pay the same 50 rupees premium. If Infosys drops to 1,400 rupees, you can still sell at 1,500 rupees, gaining 100 rupees. After deducting the 50 rupee premium, your profit is 50 rupees per share. But if the price doesn't fall below 1,500 rupees, the option becomes useless. You simply let it expire, and your maximum loss is limited to the premium, 50 rupees. 3. Swaps A swap is a private agreement where two parties exchange cash flows or financial instruments, typically to manage risk from interest rates, currencies, or commodity prices. These are not traded on exchanges. They're customized and over-the-counter. Let's understand this with a simple example of a currency swap between an Indian company and a U.S. firm. Imagine an Indian company needs to borrow $1 million for three years to pay for imported machinery from the U.S. But borrowing in dollars comes with two big challenges exchange rate risk, and higher interest rates in the U.S. At the same time, 
a U.S.-based company needs 8 crore rupees to set up a support center in India, but faces similar issues in borrowing Indian rupees. So, both companies decide to help each other through a currency swap. The Indian company borrows 8 crore rupees in India and gives it to the U.S. company. The U.S. company borrows $1 million in the U.S. and gives it to the Indian company. Now, each company has the currency it needs, at local borrowing costs, without worrying about currency fluctuation. Over time, they repay each other in the original borrowed currencies, including interest, as per the agreed terms. This way, both companies avoid the risks of foreign currency borrowing and benefit from better local interest rates. That's just one type of swap. There are also interest rate swaps, exchanging fixed and floating rate payments, commodity swaps, based on prices of oil, metals, etc. Credit default swaps, CDS, used to hedge credit risk, equity swaps, linked to stock market returns. I'll explain each of these with real-life use cases in an upcoming video. So if you're curious about how big institutions hedge billions using swaps, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. 4. Forward Contracts A forward contract is a private agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined price on a future date. Unlike futures, Forwards are customized and traded over the counter, meaning they're not standardized or exchange traded. Let's make this simple with a real life example. Suppose an Indian spice exporter is expecting a payment of $12,000 from a U.S. buyer in three months. He's worried the USD to INR exchange rate might fall, which would reduce his earnings in rupees. So, to protect himself, he signs a forward contract with an Indian bank, agreeing to sell the $12,000 at a fixed rate of 83 rupees per dollar after 90 days. Now, no matter what the market rate is on that day, whether it's 81 rupees or 85 rupees, the exporter will receive exactly 9 lakh 96,000 rupees. This way, he eliminates the uncertainty and locks in his profit. Forward contracts are commonly used by exporters, importers, and businesses to lock in prices and eliminate future uncertainty, especially when dealing with foreign currency. Each derivative type offers unique ways to hedge risks or take advantage of market opportunities, depending on the needs of the investor or business. Why are derivatives important? Derivatives aren't just gambling tools. They serve key roles in the financial world, like hedging to protect against price swings. Speculation, which allows traders to bet and earn from price movements. Arbitrage, for exploiting price differences in different markets. Liquidity, derivatives, makes markets more active and efficient. Risk transfer lets one party pass risk to another willing to take it. For example, an airline can lock in jet fuel prices using a derivative to avoid losses from rising oil prices. That's not speculation, that's smart business. Derivatives can protect, but also destroy. In the 2008 global financial crisis, Banks were using complex derivatives like CDOs, collateralized debt obligations, and credit default swaps without understanding the risk. Once the underlying mortgages failed, the entire system collapsed. That's why regulation, risk management, and financial literacy are critical when dealing with derivatives. So, what have we learned? Derivatives are financial contracts whose value is based on an underlying asset. They've evolved from ancient trade tools to trillion-dollar financial instruments. They help manage risk, discover prices, and enable strategy. 
but they also carry risk. When used wisely, they're powerful allies in finance. When misused, they can crash entire economies. Whether you're a student, investor, or just curious, derivatives are key to understanding how modern markets work. Hit the like button if this cleared up your doubts, and comment below if you want a beginner's guide to options or futures next. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for more clear, practical finance content.